So let's define the integral in two steps. First, we say that we have a function which is non-negative. That is, we have a function that only takes positive values. f is just a function of a real variable x and it returns a real variable. That means that we can make a graph of the function in the usual way by plotting the value of the function in the Cartesian coordinate system and perhaps it looks something like this. So next pick an arbitrary x value called a and an arbitrary x value greater than a called b. To continue we have to have a function where this interval from a to b is in the domain of the function. That is, the function must be defined for all the x's in between a and b, like it is in this diagram. So what we can do now is we can draw a horizontal line going through the point a, and we can draw a horizontal line going through the point b. If we then consider the graph of the function over the interval a to b and the x-axis, then we have identified an area which I've marked blue here. This blue area is of huge importance in mathematics, so we have some special notation for it. It's called the integral of f over the interval a to b. And mathematically it's denoted using this symbol called the integral sign. At the bottom of this symbol we put the left hand limit a, at the top the right hand limit b, after the integral we put the actual function f of x and we close the integral using the symbol dx. So you should think of this integral as a number, a number representing the blue area in the figure. For now let's focus on notation and not on how to actually calculate such an integral. Sometimes this is also called a definite integral. And there is a concept called an indefinite integral discussed elsewhere where you don't have the limits a and b. So let's take the second step then. The first step was for functions that don't take negative values. So what happens if you have a function, any kind of function, which is also allowed to be negative? So now we have any function, but remember it must be a real valued function of one real variable and the interval between a and b must be in the domain of the function. Again, let's draw a graph of this function, now allowing it to be negative as well. So perhaps it looks something like this. Let's pick an a and a b and as before let's draw horizontal lines through a and b and again let's identify the area between the x-axis and the graph. Beginning at a moving to the right the graph is above the x-axis so we can identify this area right here. Then the function goes negative so I change the color to green and we hit the vertical line at b. In this case the integral from a to b f of x dx is defined as the blue area minus the green area. And this is how we define the integral or more specific the definite integral in general. It is the area between the graph of the function and the x-axis between a and b whenever the function is positive we add to the area and whenever the function is negative 
we subtract from the area. Here's a simple example. We want to find the integral of the function f of x given by x from the left hand limit 0 to the right hand limit 1. Well if we make a graph of this it looks something like this the x-axis, the y-axis the function f of x equal to x is just a straight line like that I want to go from a equal to 0 to b equal to 1 and so the area I'm looking for is this area right here. If I take this point out to the y-axis I find y equal to 1. Now this is just a triangle with base 1 and side 1 so we know it has an area of 1 half. So we have concluded simply that the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x which was just x and then don't forget to put dx at the end is equal to 1 half. Here's another example. In this example we want to find the integral of the same function f of x equal to x. In this case the left hand limit is minus c and the right hand limit is c and c is just an arbitrary positive constant. So if I again draw this function f of x it looks like this. The left hand limit is minus c and c is a positive constant so it must be to the left of the origin. So let's say it's here. So this is minus c and the right hand limit is c so that's the same distance from the origin as the left hand limit so let's put that here. Draw the vertical lines and we see that the area is given by the shaded part here and this is the function f of x equal to x and we have y here. So mathematically we're looking for minus c to c x dx. Now if we look at the graph we see that the area has been split into two parts one to the left of the origin and one to the right of the origin. In this case it's clear that these areas must be exactly the same. They have the same base and the same height and remembering that whenever the function is positive we add to the area and whenever the function is negative we subtract from the area we realize that this integral must be zero.